Hello, my friend. This is Clyde. Let's talk about a new approach to an old order. We're reading from Matthew 28, verse 16 to 20. Then the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go. When they saw him, they worshipped him, but some doubted. Then Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. I remember something that emerged in the 2016 U.S. presidential elections. It had to do with statements that were made in social media. It was said that among the possible sources of some of these comments was the young, intelligent, unemployed man who was living in the basement of his parents' home. From there, it is suspected that he would send out all kinds of comments from his computer that could influence voters' opinions. Then it was hypothetical, but somehow, as I interact with today's text, this reference from the elections of six years ago has come back to mind. Well, here is the background. Jesus had a scheduled meeting in Galilee with his disciples shortly after his resurrection. In that meeting, Jesus unpacked some very important statements that spoke to his plans for the continuation of his mission here on earth to bring the gospel of eternal life to lost people. It has since been labeled the Great Commission and has become the main course of the Christian faith. So let us take a 21st century look at a 1st century message. First of all, Jesus declared then, All power in heaven and on earth has been given to me. That is a huge statement to make and has stood unchallenged for all these years. Well, it has been challenged, but has not been disproved, and we have never read where anyone has succeeded in taking away that power from Jesus. It is therefore fair to say that Jesus still has the power that was given to him back in those days. Secondly, he went on to give these disciples a direct message, a message of a mission, a message with purpose. Jesus commissioned those guys to make disciples, convert men and women to become followers of Jesus from all over the world. Those who are converted should be baptized in a new order, they should be baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Then they should commit to teaching the converts to follow or adopt all that Jesus had taught his disciples over the three-year period of his ministry with them. Thirdly, and of equal importance, Jesus assured them that he will be with them to the end of time. That last line is a secret. Well, not so much a secret, but an important clue in this great commission. In other words, fellows, this thing that they will call the great commission must never stop until the world comes to an end. It's important that you and you and you know that I am the most powerful person in the whole universe and that this assignment I'm giving you today is meant for the whole world and the consolation, yeah, the assurance that you will need is my word to you that I will be with you totally and for as long as this world is around. So what has happened since? Of the disciples, they launched an all-out program that saw them taking Jerusalem by storm with the gospel, and then they started to go outside of familiar territories. Some ended up in Samaria, a not-too-friendly place for Jews. But you know that they went beyond that? For example, one of them shared the gospel with a man from Ethiopia, who then became a disciple. You know your world history, right? Wars and ugly human experiences and creative methods have been associated with the spreading of the gospel since then. Scores of people have lost their lives while the gospel is being shared all over the world. 
In some instances, those who claimed to be spreading the gospel did some wrongful things like slavery and other forms of human exploitation. But the core message of salvation has survived all of this and is still current today. Jesus' promise that he would be with those who share the gospel still stands. So now we come to the hypothetical guy in the basement of his parents' home with his computer. This guy could be you. He could be me. He is that young person who has become a follower of Jesus or someone older who might be a professional, a housewife, a college student, and any other forms of human activity. Will you please look again at Jesus' words? He said, go and make disciples of all nations. Do you have a passport that will allow you to do international travels? Do you have funds to afford the travels? How about this? Do you have a smartphone, a laptop, an iPad? You can participate in the Great Commission right there in the comfort of your home. Remember the guy in the basement? You can come up with ideas that, when paired with the technology that is at your disposal, can take the gospel to unimaginable places on this earth. I can see you making contacts with people by audio or video link-ups. There are numerous versions of what can be described as online video sharing and social media platform that can get to people you may never meet in your lifetime within seconds just by the click of a couple buttons on your device. You can do so much with the spreading of the gospel to all nations right there from your home. There were those who went physically by foot, by ships, by animals, by postal mail, by planes, and now you can go by technology. And don't forget that Jesus will be with you all the time. I wonder if you could become an anonymous evangelist who would share Jesus with anonymous audiences. You don't have to use your name. You don't have to reveal your location. Just take the gospel to the world using the technology that you have, my friend. That is your great assignment. Take the first century message everywhere and let your transportation be 21st century technology. Jesus be with you. Can you think of some creative ways to use technology to share the gospel? Would you share some of those ideas with me through a text message sent to friendofclyde at gmail.com?